Hey everyone, my name is Caitlin Hetzel with Herzig Engineering. I'm the training programs manager with an electrical engineering background here at Herzig, and I have my CESCP. So today I wanna to talk to you about arc flash warning labels. What are they, what information is on there, and how should you apply it? So this is going to apply to any electrician, of course, but also any maintenance worker that might have any kind of electrical task. Anytime you're going to have to get into an electrical enclosure with one of these labels, you need to know how to interpret it and apply the safe work practices associated with it. Or if you supervise people who have maintenance or electrical tasks or you're an electrical contractor, for example, you're gonna to need to know how to read these and apply that information safely. Another thing that I wanna point out before we get started is that these are our specific warning labels. So other companies might have a different layout, but there's something kind of unique about ours that take a little bit of that guesswork and time thinking through things out of it of course, a qualified worker should be able to think through all this information, but we wanna make it as easy as possible, and so that's what we do with these labels. All right, so let's get into it. We've got the warning label, and we've got a danger label. I'll explain where the cutoff between these are after I kind of break down what's on each of these. So first thing I wanna point out is whether it is a warning or danger label, that's gonna be right at the top orange with a black lettering would be considered warning. It does say qualified persons only and that you need to have arc flash and shock PPE. So what does that mean? The arc flash incident energy is the amount of potential arc flash hazard that a worker may face. How hot is it? How extreme could that be? And that gives you a hint as far as what kind of PPE you need. And that's gonna be expressed in calories per centimeter squared. So a lot of people will look at that number and then they look at their PPE and make sure that the rating on it is greater than what it says for the available arc flash incident energy if an arc flash were to occur. That's one of the minimum requirements of having a warning label for arc flash hazards is the calories per centimeter squared if you do the incident energy analysis method. The very next thing that I want you to look at is the arc flash boundary and the working distance because those two are associated with the incident energy analysis that is performed. So the working distance is the distance that the arc flash incident energy is calculated at. So if you get closer than 18 inches, this number right here actually would go up. If you're further away, then the further away you get, it lowers. But the arc flash boundary is that key determining factor of when you have to wear arc rated PPE. So in this example, it's 45 inches. Now, the calories per centimeter squared and the arc flash boundary are going to change depending on the results of the study. The working distance is the same for most, if not all, low voltage equipment. Another thing to point out on this label is the recommended minimum PPE box. Not everybody has this on their label. Oftentimes it says just refer to the latest NFPA 70E, which is technically acceptable. But this is where we start to change things up a bit. We want to take out that guesswork. We want to make sure that nobody has to go back and waste time if they don't remember off the top of their head with a million other things to remember what to wear for 5.11 calories per centimeter squared of a hazard. So we list out the recommended minimum PPE. It says minimum for two reasons. One, they have to still do a risk assessment and any qualified person should know that. And two, there might be other PPE for other hazards, like fall protection, for example. That's not gonna be listed specifically on this label. So they still have to, like I said, do a risk assessment, but this at least gets the electrical hazard PPE taken care of. The other big difference between us and other labels would be that site-specific PPE level. A lot of companies just do the arc flash incident energy or the PPE level, but not both. The reason we do both is to make it easier again for you. If you know you have a level two kit sitting there from your PPE supplier, then you don't have to think about what's in this box or what this number means. You can go grab that kit as long as you know it's a complete kit and fills all those items. Some people push back and say that you're not supposed to do this, but I challenge it because it is a site specific PPE level. And every single one of our clients have appreciated being able to set their site specific PPE levels the same as what their PPE actually says. It just so happens that PPE suppliers and manufacturers mirror what PPE categories in 70E distinguish for different levels of PPE. 
So that's how we bridge the gap between what the incident energy analysis results say versus what the PPE suppliers are actually selling. Make it as simple as possible. You go grab the kit that matches the number on the label. The other information that's required and we definitely need to talk about are the shock hazard parts. So down here in the bottom left, we have the shock hazard level. In this example, it's 208 volts, alternating current AC, which means that you need a minimum glove class of double lot or zero zero. And that would be good up to 500 volts AC. And of course you would put your leather protectors over the top of those. It also has the limited and restricted approach boundaries, which are 42 inch and 12 inch respectively. And any qualified person should know how to establish those boundaries and keep unqualified persons out and what it means when they can or can't cross that restricted approach boundary, for example. We also include the short circuit amps that are available at that location. In this example, it's 3.42 Ka. That fluctuates depending on the results of the short circuit study. We also put the location of the label. So the panel name or the disconnect name, just to make sure you know exactly what it is you are interacting with before you get into it. Another thing would be in the bottom right, the very last thing that you wanna look at is the prepared date. This gives you two hints. Number one, is it done within the last five years? If not, you know it's time to get an update. The other part of this date is that if you've done renovations since, or if you've swapped out fuses, or if you've swapped out a breaker or changed settings on a breaker, anything upstream of where this label has been applied, you know to call into question the results of the study because this label information may no longer apply. So that's pretty much it for a warning label. Let's move on to a danger label. It's essentially the same layout, except now we've got a red top with white lettering that says danger. And the difference between the orange and the red is from an ANSI standard to signal potential harm or death to probable harm or death, basically. The key difference with a danger label is that it's no PPE defined. Now this cutoff is determined by the amount of PPE you have, the level of PPE you have. Most people will cut it off at 40 because they don't have a suit greater than 40 cals per centimeter squared of rating. Some people cut it off at 60 because they invest in a higher rated suit. That's really dependent on your organization and what you can provide your employees for protection. So if that's the case, let's say you have the typical 40 cal cutoff that most people do. Well, this would be in this example, 71.8 cows per centimeter squared. Clearly a 40 cal suit's not gonna cut it. So it just says no adequate PPE to protect. Again, if you had a 100 cal suit, for example, maybe this would still be just a warning label. That's up to you. So those are the key elements of an arc flash warning label and the information that it comes with. It's a fire hose of information on a little four x four or four x six label, whatever size it is, but it's all very relevant and important in order to keep yourself and others safe outside of those boundaries and wearing the right PPE if you're in them for any reason. So that's a lot of information on one little four x four label that you might find on any piece of electrical equipment in your facility that could potentially have an arc flash hazard. So if you need to know more about how to apply the information on these labels or interpret it from there, definitely reach out to us. We can help with that. We have online and in-person training and we can always talk through what would be the best solution for you because that's really the main thing. We wanna make sure that you have the information and the knowledge and the, the best practices to getting everybody home safely every single day. So go onto our website, request a quote. You can get in contact with me through that as well, and we can talk. We'll figure out what works best for you. Go home safe.